Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests were standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it has crossed the Jordan, the waters of, Jude, of Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be memorial to the people of Israel forever. And the word is... Thanks be to God. Remember what God has done. Lay down stones. Don't forget. Tell, give these commands to your children, to their children's children, so that they will remember what the Lord our God has done. And over and over, Lord, we're called to be a people that remembers your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We're called to remember that it was love that drove him to the cross. It was grace that forgave the people. Amen. It was mercy that set us free. Yes, Lord. And it was redemption that we all enjoy. And Amen. an inheritance that awaits us all. Thank who by Jesus. faith put their trust Amen. in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. For those, Lord, that we've called by name, many very serious, dealing with cancers and surgeries awaiting. Yes, Lord. Lord, you know each and every need. You know each and every anxiety, each and yes, every Lord. concern. You know each and every tear. But you've heard each and every prayer. Amen. And God, we know that you are a God that is faithful. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the praise reports that we heard of Amen. cancer and remission. Thank you. People going through hardships and God, it seems as though there what seemed to be no hope. Yes. Now there is hope. Amen. For you are a God of hope. Amen. So Lord, we cast our cares upon you. Yes, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you fill us with the perfect love. Amen. Glory to God. Perfect trust. Yes. Because we know that perfect love casts out all fear. Fear, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we put our hope, Amen. our trust, yes, Lord. our faith yes. in Amen. you. Yes. In Christ's name we pray. Thank you, the Jesus. Said, Amen. 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 Would you stand? Because we have a story to sing to the nation. That's right.
as you remain standing preparing for our school. Alive. Remember to tell these to your children and to your children's children. History is a simple compound word meaning his story. Did you know that? You see, the divine story and the human response were never to be forgotten. The primary way this was done was by the ancient method of oral communication called the story. It is to be passed on to generations. It was communicated. It connected people to their past so they, they would not be orphans. God did not want the people as they entered into a new land to forget what God had done for them to get them there to begin with. We as a nation, if we're not careful, if we forget our sense of remembrance, if we no longer hold the banner of Christ or the freedoms by which we enjoy, the freedoms by which enrich our lives, we are but one generation of losing a nation. We must be careful that we communicate the story, our past, and our heritage remind us that we're not orphans, but we are heirs of a great inheritance as well. We have a grand his story. We are a part of a long and ongoing story, and we need to keep alive the stories for they, in a real sense, keep us alive. We remember what we are, we remember. On Memorial Day, we all will remember many things. We will remember those who gave the supreme sacrifice for our land and keep us free today. I hope we will remember the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I hope we will remember the great document penned on July the 4th in 1776. I hope we remember, not for nostalgia's sake or to be sentimental, but to be sure that these great documents continue to guide and nurture us as a people, as a civilization, and to prevent us from becoming orphans in a promised land. We are a people connected to a great story and that story is unfinished. Hallelujah. How will our Amen. children, or our children's children, tell the next story to the next generations? Amen. And that's important because the power of memory invites us to participate in the present. One of the great Jewish writers of our time, Elie Wiesel, teaches us that memory not only connects us with the past, but keeps us alive in the present. You see, as the people of God, we encounter God's power and God's presence, and so we experience the power and presence of God on our journey as well. Amen. As Joshua instructed the people to build an altar of stones to remember God's mighty acts, God's presence with them. We Amen. can build stones of remembrance for the next generations right here in Myrtle Grove. Yes, Amen. Mm -hmm. I am grateful, though I never met them. I read their names every day as I come through the office door and take a left down the hallway. There's a plaque of the charter members of this church. Their names are enshrined as a remembrance that they, through God, by faith, lived out their life in such a way in order that you and I may enjoy the ministries of this church and congregation. I see these children who line themselves up and they hold the flag and the Christian flag in the Bible. What will we leave them? What will we teach them? What from us will we pass on to them so that they can remember, that they can tell the story? Oh, I remember when that congregation allowed me to stand and hold a flag or to direct people in the congregation to respond to the colors. It means something. It matters. In just a few weeks, we're going to have a young man who sings in the choir, who's asked to be baptized. What a blessing that will be. 
We will be called to remember what God has done for us. Amen. The mighty acts of salvation. And you will be charged to live a life that you keep the vows in which you made at your baptism so that others who follow us can live out the story of faith, can be inspired to be faithful to their church and to the kingdom of God. Henry Nowen wrote, the strategy of the principalities and powers of this world is to d disconnect us and to cut us off from the memory of God. For years, people who do not believe in God or believe necessarily in the Constitution, certainly not in the Bibles, have done everything that they had could within their power to eradicate God from our school systems and from our prayers. We see the result yes. of allowing that memory to be Amen. erased. 19 children mm -hmm. and two adults were slaughtered. Amen. May God help us as a nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that as we remember our veterans who have given their lives, that we pause for a moment on this occasion, in this sermon, to remember the lives of those who was taken by evil. And let us pray that we as a people of God Hallelujah. respond in hope and love. Amen. Would you take just a moment, one minute, and let us pray. power of memory reminds us that we have a God that is for us and not against us. Amen. Amen. We have a God that's able to do far above and beyond that we could ever hope, dream, or even begin to imagine. Now is the time, church. Let us leave our children and our children's children with a living heritage in which they can be proud of. The power of memory invites us to participate in the present. And the memory of the past propels us forward to proclaim a bright and beautiful future. The Church of Jesus Christ is not a museum. Mm -hmm. But it is a mission launching pad Amen. for us and the next generation. Amen. Once we have been nurtured on who we are and what we are and whose we are, then we have the ability to launch out, to raise ourselves, to catch the wind of the Holy Spirit as God leads and carries and directs us to our next destination in the journey in which God has called us to. The fertile soil of the past allows us to dream dreams and to claim visions in our time of what God can do in our place, in our country, in our world. Because I believe that the God who had delivered even the Egyptians out of bondage, a God who was able to part the sea, a God who is able to raise Jesus Christ from the dead, is a God that can resurrect yes. the United States of America and bring peace to our world. Amen. Amen. Our past is a reminder that it's not all about us. It's not our story. It's God's story. Amen. So church, let us remember. We're called, we're called to pass on a great inheritance to others. Yes. To be a great influence in our community. Amen. 
I want to say this. I know our time is done, but I have just a little story before I conclude with the last passage of Scripture. I think it was yesterday I uh, was buying some groceries and went to Walmart and they didn't have half of what I needed. Go figure that. So I stopped by a grocery advantage, you know, right out here by Warburger. And uh, I was in line and there was only two cash registers. All I had was a bag of uh, frozen uh, okra. I love boiled okra. And I was waiting patiently as the lady in front of me, black lady with her older son and a grandson, and she was counting uh, the items and how much it cost because she knew in her mind how much money she had on her uh, food stamp card. So when she got to a certain amount that she had figured up in her mind, she said, stop right there and tell me how much that is. I need to know. And there were uh, at least 15 more items, meat and other things that one would need for groceries, not frivolous things, but actually things to cook meals with. And the lady said, oh, it's this amount. And she put in her pen on her card and stuck it in the little box and it said, she said out loud, you have $4 left on your account. And you could see the disappointment in the lady's eyes as she looked back and saw her groceries there. I slid my bag of okra up next to those and I said, ma'am, go ahead and run that through and then put this on my account. I want to buy these groceries for this lady. I pulled out the church credit card. <laughs> because on that church credit card I have access to the altar fund in which you give money here uh, on the altar rails into that fund and so it was only $32 but that $32 meant more than you could imagine mm -hmm. gentleman in the back says that's a wonderful thing to do sir God bless you which gave me the opportunity to preach right there in line. Right? Hallelujah. everybody's looking. And I said, well, I'm the pastor at the Methodist Church. Oh, you're down there by the duck pond. Yes, we go there to get groceries. <laughs> thank you. Tell your church people, thank you. We go every Tuesday to get groceries. They left and went out in the parking lot and as I gathered my okra and was headed out, they were waiting on me. And they said, Pastor, would you come here for a moment? And she began to, with tears, thank your congregation, thank your people, because I told her it's the people of the congregation that bought her groceries th this morning. And the older gentleman said, my daughter, Years ago, attended your youth group at that church, and she's in the military right now doing a wonderful job. And we're so proud of her. He said, tell your church, thank you for pouring into her life. That's Hallelujah. the inheritance that we need to lead in this community. Amen. As a people of God, we have an inheritance that will never spoil or fade. May our past be a reminder to live and work in his kingdom in the present. Hallelujah. That others may build on the foundations that we're laying down for future generations. <laughs> Let us not forget the sacrifice of brave men and women who gave up their freedom that we might enjoy ours. Yes. And never forget the sacrifice that Christ gave in order that we all may be truly free. Jesus told Thomas, when Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and we don't know the way. He said, I am the way that is the past. Jesus from ages past has been our way to the Father. He said, I am the truth that is our present. We live in the truth of Christ. Amen. The scripture that guides our life. And he is the life that is our future. That is the inheritance that we have as the people of God. And Jesus said, if you know the truth, then the truth will set you free. Set you free, yes. Let us pray. Father, thank you. On behalf of this people and this congregation, 
with one collective voice. We say thank you for the heritage and inheritance that we have. Yes, Lord. We stand on the shoulders of men and women throughout the years who have given their life to keep the faith alive, to yes, keep the Jesus. freedoms alive, to keep our, our freedoms alive in us. May we, as a people of God, continue to work together. At times, Lord, even putting aside our differences for a greater good and a greater purpose. Amen. May we, as a people of God, always remember that love is what binds us together. That we are at all times to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace so that we can leave for the next generations a healthy church yes. and a healthy mission Amen. and a healthy inheritance. Yes, Jesus. God, make it so here, and may it start with me. Amen. For I ask in Christ's name, amen. 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 Let's stand together as we sing our closing hymn this morning, Blessed.